next to the studio on the same page as the studio. Um, because in general, the idea is we're going to do a walkthrough of a program that will be similar to your studio, and then you can go do the studio um, in your pairs or groups. Studio here, I've got it listed at the end of chapter two. Oh, one more, uh, one more thing I want to do because I'm going to use it here. Um, in your toolbar at the top of the book, there's this little editor icon. Okay, so if any of you have clicked on that and found it you can get your own little pop-up editor here. And this is just a place for you to play around with code. If you have an idea, something you want to try, you can go use that and pull it up and just type and run code in here, even if you don't have an editor in that page or you don't want to mess up the other code in that page. So I can now, in this editor window, I can just write code. Um, I can run it. I can save it. Remember that when I first load it, if I have saved code there, I need to hit load for that to pull it in. And there's one of these editors for every single page in your book. So if I say print... Hello. Here, I can run it. Um, I can save it. If I close it and then go to like another page in the book, let me go to the next page. It's chapter three. I can pull this up here, and I hit load, and it says you don't have any code saved here. That's because that code I wrote on the last page was saved with that page, essentially. Okay, so it's kind of nice. You've got one of these little scratch pads for every single page in the book. Go ahead and use them to try out things. Uh, and don't forget to save your code. It's not going to save automatically. All right, so let's go back one page. I'll pull up my editor and prove to you that it's saved. There it goes. I'm going to make it a little bigger so we have some room to see what we're doing. Okay, so uh, let's look at, let me give you the problem statement for what we're about to do. So we're going to call it a pre studio. Um, we're going to write a program that prompts a user to input the subtotal of their meal, so you're going out for dinner, maybe you already have, um, along with the percentage that they would like to tip. It's because we tip on the subtotal, right? Don't forget that. You don't need to tip on the tax. And then we're going to calculate the, the and print out the tip amount to the screen. Okay, so that's our that's our assignment. All right, so I'm going to do, first what I'm going to do is I'm going to use comments to outline my code. This is a good practice. I'm going to try to do it every time I go through an example in class. Um, I hope you will try to integrate this into your coding practice too. So um, what do I need to do first? I've got a lot of things I need to do here. What's the first thing that my program should do? Prompt the user for what? I've got two things I'm going to prompt them for eventually, right? In this case, it doesn't really matter, but I can prompt user for meal subtotal. There you go. And I need to prompt them for one more piece of information. User for tip percentage. Uh, notice that percentage of tip, right? So this is going to be important, and we'll see why. When you're reading uh, problem specifications, instructions on programs that you should write, these details are going to be important, uh, both to you know the way the program is supposed to write, and also if our grading scripts are going to expect things to work in certain ways. So here I'm saying the percentage. So I would use enter five as five percent instead of the decimal value of 5%, which is what? What's the 0 0.05, okay? So here I'm going to prompt, say, give me the percentage tip, and I'm going to be, the user should expect to enter 5 for 5% instead of 0 0.05, okay? So there's a, an important difference there that we'll have to deal with in our program. Uh, what might I do next? Calculate uh, the tip amount. And I need to, yeah, print. Okay, so those, that's a good high level overview. There's, you might have some other ideas of other things we're going to have to do, and that's okay. There are some other things we're going to have to do in there. Um, but, you know, with this, at this point, I'm not worried about the absolute nitty gritty details of this. I'm just trying to get a conceptual overview of the steps I need to take in my code, okay? Um, all right, so let's do the first piece. I'm going to print the user for prompt the user for the meal subtotal. So a variable called subtotal. I'm going to set that to be equal to the result. of asking the user for the subtotal of their meal. So you can you know you can put whatever you want here. I like to be concise. I'm just going to say meal subtotal colon space. That way there's a space between my message and their input. Some nice visual separation there. 
Okay. I need to do a similar thing with the tip percentage. Uh, tip percent, that's kind of two words. I want to use to describe the same variable. I put an underscore there. I can't put a space in variable names. Okay, that's an important important thing if you're new to coding. So you can use things like da uh, dashes or underscores. Um, and say tip percent colon. All right, this is good. So something else I'm going to do right now, I'm just going to run my code. Dollars and okay. so why did I do that? Just to make sure it works. I just typed some code. I didn't want to like write 20 lines of code and then run it and have everything break. Then I have 20 lines to figure out what just happened, right? So I only have two lines of code. If something went wrong there, I only have two lines to look at to figure out what went wrong. Okay, so that's a, that's another good practice to run your code frequently. Okay, calculate the tip amount. Or any ideas, of, say, what, should, what should I do next? I have to calculate tip amount as my next step. I can do that, but there's some other, uh, other, other things I really need to do before I can do that, before I can totally do that. Yeah. Change what to an int. I've got two variables here so far. All good, all good points. So basically, the main point that the first gentleman was making was that my input function returns a string, right? But I need to think about, if I'm going to calculate, if I have a subtotal, it's going to be some dollars and cents. I need to think of that as a number, right? Um, then I heard some other voices saying that that number should be a float because it has potentially a decimal point. It could have 1499 or 1023 or 3567. Um, any of those things should be valid inputs to my program, so I need to be able to handle those. I should turn that input, that subtotal, into a float rather than an integer. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that up here, actually. Okay. And here is an example of just giving a, var uh, a variable um, a, a new value. I'm just going to use that same variable subtotal and just convert it by reassigning it the value of what I get by using the float conversion function, okay? You can do this in the same line, too, if you want. I'm just going to show you this. If you are comfortable doing this, do that, too. Um, early on, that might look like a lot going on in one line, so it's not a bad thing to keep those on separate lines so we kind of have a clear idea of what we're doing. But you, that's, that's legal code. All right, so now I probably have a similar problem down here, right? My tip percentage is going to come in as a string. What should it be? And it's a percent. Remember, it's a percentage, right? So percentages. I mean, I guess they can be. They could be. They could be floats. Um, let's let's go ahead and use a float. At this point, you can decide, right? Maybe we're only like accepting whole percentages, but let's go ahead and use a float. This is just kind of a simple call. I want to do one more thing before I either do it here or I can do it in the next line, but I need to take that percentage and convert it to a decimal number. Right? If I get 5%, there, this, this is just going to convert it from the string 5 to the float 5.0, but 5.0 is still a, like a, still a percentage number. It's not the decimal representation of that percentage. What do I need to do? I can do this in, in any of multiple places, but I need to convert it to a decimal representation. I'd buy 100 or multiply times 0 0.01. Okay, those are the same, uh, same, same thing here. So now this tip percentage, if I, if the user inputs five, float will turn it into 5.0, and this will turn it into 0 0.05. It's just going to move the decimal place two places to the left. Now it's a number I can use in actual arithmetic and calculations. Okay, if that was confusing, you might just put a comment here to say convert percent value to decimal value. I'm there to, to make it clear what I was doing. Now this is this is a pretty easy one, right? Calculate the tip amount, tip. The tip I get, I just multiply the percentage times the value. So subtotal times tip percent. And store that in a new variable called tip. I'm going to save my code just in case. And then I'm going to print that to the screen. Okay, 
here I'm using uh, the version of print where I can list multiple things there. This is just going to take tip, which is a number, and the string tip, col tip colon, kind of put them together there and nicely format that on the screen. All right, so I'm going to save. Let's run this and see what goes on. Um, 14 and I don't know if this works yet. I'm going to use some really easy numbers to calculate. Let's say a 10% tip. It's out. 1.499. Okay, now at this point, you might say, well, I can't have like 0.9 cents. That's a good point, but we're not going to worry about that right now. We're just going to let that be the answer. Okay. Yes. Um, I don't think you have to, but let's just try it. Any other questions about, about what we did there? We cool? All right. Uh, now you can take this to the restaurant when you go out this weekend and fire up your laptop when it's time to pay. Um, OK, so your studio, the way this is going to work, so we've set up some extra tables around the room. We're trying to figure out the best setup for this class for these kinds of activities. So bear with us. We might tweak things a little bit. But generally, your teaching fellows for each of your advisories are here tonight. They're going to distribute themselves to relatively where they were last time. Okay, um, you can. You don't have to go to that area of the room. We encourage you to go to kind of work with your group. Split up, and uh, definitely don't try to do this with yourself. We really want you to work with classmates, both as a means of working with uh, people that you can get help from. Also. Um, it's just a good programming practice. There's something called pair programming is a concept that even professional developers use all the time. Our developers here at LaunchCode do it all the time. And it's a good way to, um, just a good way to get better at coding is to have two minds working on the same problem set, or the same coding problem. So find uh, one or another two other people. You can, you know, it doesn't have to be a pair. You can get three of you together. But work on the same piece of code. Don't, put, don't have three laptops with your head buried in three different laptops, all right? Work on the same piece of code collaboratively. Uh, and work together um, and work on the studio problem. And the studio problem is on the studio page. Uh, I'll explain that in a second, but just in, to continue this thought, there's some extra tables back here. Um, these chairs have to go with those tables. We are maxed out on the number of chairs in the building. So if you're going to go back to the, if your groups are meeting back at these white tables, take some chairs with you. Uh, there are also a few empty white tables up there that are missing chairs. So if you're on that side, if you're in that advisory, take a, few, take a chair with you. Um, and yeah, and so we're just going to work the rest of the time. I'm not going to have any, anything else to present or anything to come back on. If you don't finish this today, it's OK. We're not going to grade this. The whole point is to work on this, to try to learn something, and have your TFs help you out along the way. So uh, the problem is here. I'm not going to read through it. You can go ahead and read through it and work on it. It's going to be similar to use some similar concepts to what we just did in this walkthrough. Um, and it's going to get you some good practice at writing code on your own. All right. Go for it. <laughs> 